give me just a minute to get set up here. Okay. All right. So um, it's my honor to uh, introduce uh, Dr. Chi Fun Chan, co CEO of uh, Synopsis, to uh, present our first keynote this morning Thriving in Our Changing Environment. Um, as Synopsis's uh, co-CEO, uh, Chi Fun Chan shares responsibility for crafting vision and strategy, leading the company and ensuring execution excellence in support of our customer's success. He has also served as the company's president and COO, a role he held for 14 years prior to his 2012 appointment to president and co-CEO, where he guided internal operations and worldwide field organizations. Chi Fun joined Synopsis in 1990 as VP of Applications and Services, where he helped build the technical field organization. He has sponsored several key initiatives, such as entering the IP market, and he has personally facilitated key acquisitions, such as Avanti, Barrage Logic, Magma Design Automation, and SpringSoft. In 2014, he led Synopsys' entry into the software testing market with the acquisition of Coverity, and into the software security market with the acquisition of Codenomicon. Prior to Synopsys, Chi Fun contributed to industry leading companies like NEC Corporation, where he was general manager of the microprocessor group responsible for marketing all NEC chip devices in North America. And prior to NEC, he was an engineering manager at Intel. He holds uh, MS and PhD in computer engineering from Case uh, Western Reserve University and a BS in electrical engineering from Rutgers University. So without further ado, I would like to welcome Dr. Chi Fun. Sean. Thank you, Kurt. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, great. Thank you. And I will try to share my screen now. And thank you for the okay. introduction, first of all. <laughs> and uh, let me see. Uh, how do I share a screen? I share screen. Okay. Can you see my screen? Uh, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Oh, I have to hit share. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Can you see my now screen? Now we got, yes. Uh, yes. Okay, T technology work, especially <laughs> in ISQED. So thank you, Kurt, um, for the introduction and congrats uh, again on ISQED award. And uh, I have to say thank you to Sarah. The, the, being on the technical committee is not easy organizing, this. so there's a lot of work and, uh, and Cindy for choosing the best paper. And then of course to Ali for continue ISQED. It's quite an honor to be able to uh, speak to the group. So uh, a big thank you, uh, first of all. Okay, so I will start today um, <laughs> by sharing some of my thoughts on from the, uh, I thought there's a team of experts on many things and uh, especially on core, what can I contribute? I thought, okay, maybe I just think about what I see in the future we might need in this changing environment. And uh, of course, there are many changes coming on uh, global uh, environment, et cetera. So um, if you will, in the next 30 minutes, I'll try to share some of my thoughts about what I think will be important. Um, so I'll get started. Okay, Ali, just everybody. Okay. Um, okay, let's see if I have to be able to control my screen. Okay, this thing works. <laughs> I think our world is changing in significant ways. And I pick three, right? First of all, I think um, I pick the supply chain, play COVID and play the uh, security. And I, I think it's permanent this, uh, and I'll also end up with this uh, because somehow it's tied in my mind to this change and thrive where I think. Our uh, changes on COVID-19 are now permanent. Of course, all of us know just like this virtual thing, we all know uh, working from home. Um, and actually, most of us don't think we're working from home. We're just living at work because we're just uh, a lot more, a lot more time, a lot more work. I think before um, be, before the uh, this is more significant changes in my mind than say September 11 because uh, before September 11, you know, when I go to the airport, if I if the door was not closing, I consider myself wasting time <laughs> to, at the airport. Now I spend three hours earlier, well, two years ago, I don't travel anymore. Two, we go two hours to the airport and just work at the airport. Because so I think this returning from office and everything is a permanent and there's fundamental shift in the, um, 
uh, and the workforce. The next thing is the supply chain. I mean, it's, uh, it's already hitting global uh, growth. Of course, you see all the car. This, the, today, there's even, even just this week, there's more news about the delay of um, uh, shipment of Ford cars, et cetera. So I'll go deeper into this one. And then the third one is also executive order. This is from the White House, an executive order to um, uh, improve our cybersecurity, right? And even just uh, two weeks ago, there was another uh, briefing from the White House. It said, act now to protect um, uh, the uh, cybersecurity of the industry. So obviously, you know this, um, and all these are somehow tied together. And eventually you can see that uh, these changes are all somehow related between all these three of um, these certain event. And I'll try to go into it. But clearly, uh, just so they know about why cybersecurity is important is that for the first time, you start to have uh, hacking and stealing of virtual currency, of digital currency, right? I mean, so, um, how are these related to ISQD? We are a uh, community of hardware and software and physicists and chem all in, interested in quality. And I think without quality, you cannot move to the next step. And I will try to um, try to share my thoughts on those. So in my mind, basically, um, if you, you really is, the changes is everywhere. And it's coming from all the way to basically from silicon to software. And there has to be, uh, even though we are still dealing with the same issue of all testing and everything else, we start have to now to think about the effect of the workforces from COVID, the security issues and um, uh, the supply chain. And I'll continue this. Well, first of all, amazingly, the semiconductor industry is very healthy in 2021. You know, the world is, um, is a lot of issue in the world, whether it's the the war, uh, the um, climate changes, and the, all the uh, pandemic. But semiconductor is doing well. And actually, I would say taking a much more prominent position. This just came out, of course, for the 2021, because we're ending, almost ending in uh, Q1 year, right? So this last year's result. You can see Intel is um, still number one, even though the growth is the uh, smallest thing. Samsung is, uh, of course, in Q, for quarter to quarter is already leading. And then there's a lot of changes, but even if you look on almost on the bottom line, that the total market grew 24%. And I think there is a phenomenon in many of our industries that the, the, in many ways, the, the industry uh, was worried about whether we can work in this virtual sense or not. And now we found that we're actually more productive for several reasons. And I'm sure there are experts sociologists that will get why the productivity of many of these uh, high tech company are actually higher. I think it has to do with people working harder, people having um, less commute time or travel time, but then there are several things they're missing. I mean, we're trading off several issues and, um, and people are wanting to get back together in certain ways to, to do so, and I'll comment on that. So several other things that's kind of critical in this uh, industry looking in this, you can see change is the only constant, right, because Samsung retained the top spot in the Q4. It's still number two in the yearly, and the high likelihood it will now emerge as the top uh, spot in the overall industry by the end of 2022, but we don't know. Of course, you know that the AMD completed the uh, uh, purchases of Silence, and if you look at the last chart, it has phenomenal growth. So against our industry as changing significantly before there was Altera, which Intel bought now Silence. And then I think the other big event is the SoftBank and NVIDIA calling off a $40 billion deal for, for ARM. Of course, you all know that. But one way to kind of um, uh, think about this is with the uh, acquisition of, of uh, this deal calling off, there is $40 billion worth of desire, let's say. It's not cash. It's desire moving around. Plus the other, you know, early on there was this um, uh, Broadcom, Qualcomm. So there are hundreds of billion dollars of forces moving around economically. And in our industry, um, technology are very deep and then they're influenced by very, very strong economics around it, right? And then if you look at even at CNBC, they start to mention chips. I mean, everybody now knows chips. Um, and and uh, I recently tried to acquire a new car and 
they want to charge me more than MSRP. And I was kind of insulted, but he said, do you know there is a worldwide shortage of chip? You know, you know what a chip is? So, I mean, even the car salesmen are now telling me about IC chips. So this global chip shortage now is starting to a major real world consequence. And that's not in cars. It's in, it's in your instrument, it's your ultrasonic instruments and everything else. So I think this is where this community in ISQED, when we were looking at the chip and the design, we start to know it's affecting all of us in some, affecting all of us actually in our professional life. And I'll continue on this discussion. So I think there is a change in fundamental measurement. I think that people eventually look for one of the you know, most important things, whether it's cars or health or everything, is safety. And ISQD started with quality, right? We are very focused on quality. We understand why quality is. And you know, it, I think it is a one thing that uh, you want to keep seeking to be better and better, and there is no limit uh, to it. And so um, that's why I'm very, very interested and uh, very excited about this community. But I think there is another measurement uh, of change, which is security. Okay, and that's where I want to spend share my thoughts on. I think without quality, though, you could not get security. You know, and without quality and security, there is no safety. So uh, that's why Synopsys entered this market um, in about five years ago in security, and uh, and we started with uh, Coverity because it's one of these static starting analysis tool and for software quality, right? So I want to make several more comments on, on this uh, sec security issue, because I think the semiconductor industry, where many, many of the ISQD community are, must understand security. And it's not just in the network and the software, but in the processor, but in the, all the devices and all the security system, because I, I this might be too similar. I think that we have to understand what causes security and what doesn't cause security. And today, you know, many people, many people say there are only two types of company, right? There's only company that have been hacked, and there are company that don't know they've been hacked. So you know, if you look at the recent uh, uh, security that even affect us, like the colonial pipeline that affected all the gas, and recently all the different, uh, I'm talking about ransomware where you actually have to pay so tens of millions of dollars to releases your uh, to releases your data and recently the uh, food industry right have also been hacked so that um, so where are the security breaches in all these and I'm sure in the different session can look down whether it's down into the architecture or into the software or into the uh, uh, devices or the tracing alone anyway we must understand this uh, step today. Um, eventually, this will be an absolute requirement uh, to do to be have. Another major industry changes that we are going on is the geopolitical forces, right? So semiconductor supply chain um, is, get, and you can see this in almost every uh, almost every uh, articles or news in the paper about. And it's just not US and China, it's all over the different countries and different places on the geopolitical uh, forces that's hampering the supply chain. And so there is a major change. And so the, the way I like to think about this change is actually saying that, you know, it's changing from a tightly coupled system to a loosely coupled system. And we know that uh, semiconductor industry and all of us are in a very tightly coupled and I will I'll end the chart by showing the different countries and all these things, but we all understand between all of our companies here, how we are so tightly coupled. But as the geopolitical forces come in, it forces certain different type of alliances and ecosystem. And so I choose to think about it as tightly coupled and loosely coupled because um, if you're hardware, you understand uh, the, the difference in thinking of tightly coupled and loosely coupled on the processor and cache memory and different architecture. If you're thinking in software, you think about the function call, how you pass parameters, et cetera. And all of it, um, you can start to kind of guess, since I'm not a political scientist, I can kind of guess where the new alliance could be, because basically a tightly coupled to loosely coupled system uh, is trading off efficiency to resilience. Okay, and I think this is another way to think about the supply chain. Not only were there issues between the uh, 
first in the automotive because of the COVID the economy, placing order, um, cell phone, other things, stripping demands, et cetera. But now you have this extra ad added inefficiency you're going to build in on the supply chain uh, because they're starting to be uh, more loosely coupled uh, with the system. So I think, I think that there is a, actually a, um, uh, the supply chain issue is going to, the, the issue is going to increase, not decrease. Uh, because the system is getting more complicated and there are more forces besides uh, what we used to deal with in ISQD, you know, there's physics, the chemistry, the architecture, the test. Now you have geopolitical uh, forces coming in. So um, again, this, this will cause a lot of different uh, new alliances and changes. And so even a, a uh, look is you know, the new ecosystem and lines in the supply chain, we have to realign in materials, in equipment, even in the EDA and IP uh, chain and the manufacturing and the design. Um, I pick a, um, I, I pick an, uh, a picture of, uh, this from SIA report to show when you go from design to manufacturing, you know, the EDA equipment and material, there are a lot of country involved. This is a representation between US, Taiwan, Korea, China, Japan, et cetera. And you can see many of these are uh, and the entire EU and any ship that's designed crosses the continent and multiple ocean multiple times. And so it will hit different supply chain issue in economic senses and different issues in um, uh, eco um, geopolitical issues. So, in my mind, that's another change uh, that is important um, in all of these issues. Maybe I change to a little bit of a um, uh, thing that I think is actually important, and it might seems to be seems to be has not has related, but I in my mind they are fairly related. Is that um, the the decentralization? I know that we talk about from tightly coupled to loosely coupled. It's not identical, but from a centralization, decentralization, there's another major force is economic in use, which is basically in the digital cyber currency and finance, right? Because it's de decentralizing finance. And um, uh, that's another change. You, you look at some of the um, headlines, Bitcoin surpassing a trillion dollar in market value. Um, by the way, a trillion dollar in market value makes it into the top five uh, currencies in the world. Right now, that's a little bit of an exaggerated comparison because it's, it's, it's top five in market value, but not certainly not in circulation. Right, that in terms of circulation, a lot of these trillion are in paper as the number go up and down. But it just still means that digital currency and cyber currency are here, right? And then uh, there are a lot of talk on the open finance paradigm, how it's changing it, and then. Interestingly, remember I said one of the major things is, cyber, is uh, security. So when you have digital currency and cyber currency, you start to have a lot of people stealing cyber currency. And recently there's another hack into one of the uh, digital wallet um, of dollars that somebody uh, took over and returned to the smaller account and just took the bigger account and actually donated to charity. So I think this is a new form of trust because um, people wanted not to trust that third party and uh, centralization, wanted to create this. And in our world of uh, software and how it is all, because the, inven the invention or the problems of now all these blockchain, which is kind of a public ledger and a lot of software hacks function, right? 2013 and decryption. That's why it sounds very far away from us. It's actually very close to us in terms of the quality and all of these. Now, the digital currency has multiple other issues in transaction speed and all of these things that the finance people will, or other people will work on. For us, it's actually related somehow into the quality side, into the security side, and certainly now there's a lot of software and hacking and everything else. So uh, from, a, from, a, from a focus on hardware and focus on the, um, uh, software security and quality this is important. And by the way, 
even though we're talking about a lot of these virtual currency and everything else, eventually a lot of people would like to have digital wallet and eventually like to have physical wallet, which then requires some semiconductor and some encryption and some kind of um, uh, basically it's another uh, I IoT devices, right? So uh, in my mind, why these things are related is because um, I like I like to start thinking of uh, off, well, on top of quality, you build security. And then in terms of security, what is the, what is the right way to think about the security um, things? And so continue to think about this is, we just talk about the geopolitical systems and then the uh, semiconductor industry is self-changing. And then now I'd like to talk about this, even though remember I said the COVID-19, I think is a permanent issue. Right, there is a um, just picking headline, right? Great resonation is taking root around the world. I think there's just a lot of changes. People are, uh, there are multiple reasons. Industry has realigned, supply chain has realigned, but also as people return to work, they are now looking at the uh, trade off between the flexibility and not flexibility. They have time to think. So there is a lot of, um, there's a great resonation, but there's also great employment. That means that people are actually, is a headline say great resonation, but there's a lot of realignment of industry and realignment of employment. And so company and um, ecosystem are now taking new routes because as you get different skill set into different mixes, it allows to give a uh, different type of uh, ecosystem. Uh, one thing, for example, the COVID-19 in the gig economy, what do you expect when the world returns to normal? Um, we used to think of FTEs, you know, full-time employment and contractors and everything. With gig economy is now much more acceptable in terms of, you know, we all use Uber, DoorDashers, and I think there's a fundamental change in how people view uh, employment. And it will come slowly. It doesn't come in a in a square way function, and it's not. It's, but it slowly uh, will change in on the. Um, will slowly changes uh, all of us. So, however, rebuilding the social capital is the next great leadership. How do we build this uh, social capital that we all miss during as we go Zoom and virtual? I think it's the next great uh, leadership instead of our, our skill set is gonna be different. There will be the workforce will be different in terms of not everybody in the same room, not everybody at together, but in different flexibility etc. and getting the most productivity and getting the most creativity, which is difficult because um, as the world changes, how do you, creativity is, um, and innovation comes from having time and having uh, different collisions of idea, friendly collisions or um, opposing collision, whichever way you want to think about it, but it's a kind of collision and amalgamation of ideas. So how does leader get to uh, foster that kind of environment? Uh, is my mind. So I'll end by saying a few few words how I, uh, the direction that I think is going in is trust turned out to be our biggest asset. Okay, we talk about um, the, the uh, security as an almost of a negative issue, but one thing about all these the opposite that is trust is the biggest issue. So you can see that that's underlying the supply chain realignment, right? You don't trust that that supply chain will be reliable or you'll be, uh, you can, you, you don't trust that uh, some, you don't trust that you'll be able to get that product when you get it or uh, that part. So that's why there is a realignment or you don't trust that you will use it for the right purposes, right? So, um, and then there's definitely this entire um, uh, social capital rebuilding of, of it. And so security become a new initiative. And I think um, the social capital rebuilding is a new skill set in terms of either in the workplace or between the different company and different things and how you work. So I like to um, uh, make a few comments on my next, as far as my 30 minutes kind of coming up here, is that change is the only constant Trust is our biggest asset. And that when we, when I titled this as thriving in a changing environment, I say the solution for us to thrive is to cultivating change, trust in this changing environment. 
So maybe I can make some um, comment here that I try to try to look, summarize that the changes are both in the, our own industry, that is the semiconductor industry, in the supply chain, in the fundamental measurements of security being a lot more dominant, in the how the workforce are working, and um, even the financial world around us, economic is working. So hopefully by now you can see all these changes are somehow related. And yet uh, on a daily work, we deal with mathematics, algorithm, material, et cetera. And yet trust is our biggest asset. So um, the reason I think that this is important is I, I think about ISQED. You know, we have uh, Q in the quality on it. And if you follow some of these new chip act and program, there's a new program called um, uh, AISS. It's called, it's called the Automatic Implementation of Secure Silicon, right? And the measurement for that is uh, instead of PPE, which we often, uh, PPA, which is power performance in area, as a, as a measure, we all familiar with that, they have changed it to PASS, P-A-S-S, right? Which is uh, power, area, speed, uh, they changed the PPA to speed and security, right? So the measurement is PASS. So in my mind, you know, ISQED already have, an, have already have the Q and already have the S in it. You know, I know it's called symposium, but security is already in our blood. And because we have the base of security is quality in whatever, in, in, and, and it's, you think about it, it's the same as if we do the, um, uh, the fundamental architecture, the testing, the et cetera, how to, and the continuous improvement, plan, do, check, add, et cetera, all of it in terms of um, the next generations of security. The other word I like to, um, I, I, when I was writing this, I thought that I would like to convey is the word cultivating. You know, uh, we're all in designing and in building. I think trust is in cultivating. Somehow I like to grow things. And I think we all have to find a way to cultivate trust in this new changing environment. I think that is we a journey worthwhile. I'm not sure I know how, um, but I think that is, is a new, in the new changing environment, give us a lot of opportunity to learn uh, how to work together, how to work in this new supply chain, how to work in this new ecosystem. And I'm sure we'll be thriving. So again, thank you for this quick um, 30 minute. I thought I can, uh, I have a lot of, uh, uh, Lot of enthusiasm and a lot of confidence in ISQED going forward. Then looking at this quality and then looking at what are, what continue to be important in in this um, in this whole environment. So, uh, thank you. I think I pass it back to you. I'm not sure how to, but thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chief Fun. Appreciate the, the the talk. I think we we do have uh, a little bit of time. I think for any questions, if there's anyone who has questions on the uh, the attendees, I think you can raise your hand and uh, we can uh, try and get your get your questions answered. I'll look in the chat too, if, just in case there was anything there. Uh, I think uh, one, of, uh, one of the uh, participants was asking, can, can you expand on the social capital topic a bit? Uh, oh, thank you. I, I thought a lot of it as we end into COVID, right? I mean, for us in um, many, many of us are locked down in March of 20, 2020, it's two years, right? And I'm thinking at that time, how can we work as a team, as a company? And I thought one of the main thing that I uh, told our colleagues and company was that we are, we are using our relationship capital. You know, we have built a lot of relationship. We know, and relation is not just, uh, it's, it's relationship as all of you know, isn't very complicated. It's not just, I trust you, you don't trust me. It's, I know what you mean. I know what you say. I know who you know. I know, I know how you would think. And so we've been using that relationship capital. And I use the word capital because 
has all capital. You have to save it. You have to build it. And eventually it depletes. You use it, spend it. You know, so the question is, how do you build this relationship capital? At that time, I thought, okay, six months, we can use it. We, we, will, we will not be at the end of it. You know, I mean, all capital, we can also be in debt and eventually to return it, right? So that's how I like to think about it. And it's two years. So you start to, you can see, you, you, I, I observe that people try to get together, have a virtual drink a uh, virtual wine party at the end of Friday. And then pretty soon after two, three times, you say, I might as well drink alone because I can see it. But, but people keep trying, right? That's what I mean in the changing environment, there are new way to build that relationship instead of uh, getting around to the coffee room and et, et cetera. So, and then we have a lot of these built-in, with all of this built-in idea of how to do this collision or innovative, meet somebody suddenly in an idea you almost have to new foster that environment. And so another one that I was interested to watch is who would be interested in that environment besides all of us in management and in design. And well, it doesn't have to be just the management designing the other. People are trying to be innovative. They need different people. Well, you know, another industry that's interested in this would be the architects, right? Because they're designing new offices. And in the, their, their lead time is, is, is as big as building a fab. I mean, their, their lead time. So you can see different idea of this uh, relationship building in different way. And some work, some doesn't work and eventually become a norm and then something change again. So uh, that's kind of why I use the word social capital. I, at first I thought relationship capital because between all of us and, but then as I look at the um, geopolitical ecosystem realigning, I thought that's how I use the word. I'm not sure it's the right, word but that's not what i was thinking thanks very good all right i see uh one more question maybe we can take what are what are the current focuses on security specifically hardware and supply chain in synopsis at the moment if you could please elaborate on that oh i i think that we are um we we have we have security in almost every aspect of it. First of all, I would say that we're all trying, okay? We're all trying to, I almost think that all company today um, cannot be distinguished by the, the superior uh, security. You can be distinguished by the lack of security. Okay, so I think this become a very important thing the last few years. So for us, we've been very focused on it in many different, uh, in almost all aspects of our business. We talk about the um, ETA side, you know, how do you know you don't have Trojan horses? How do you know you have, don't have Trojan horses embedded in certain things, right? Are we also very interested? You can see in our, our non volatile memory. You know that we make several acquisitions in our one-time programmable uh, memory, right? So all these things are very important in terms of the signature of, uh, and it is a, it is a, um, uh, a focus on the supply chain, if you will, in terms of who touches what, et cetera. So, and which tool has does what. So that's uh, extremely important. Um, and of course, part of uh, why security is uh, riding on top of quality is exactly what it was said in ISQT is testing, right? The way of testing, the way of um, enhance, uh, looking at all of them. So I would think it's in, is in verification, is in all these other areas. How do you verify? Which what, what parameter do you verify? So there's a lot of work going on in all the ETA tool side. Certainly in the IP side, there's a lot of it, right? Because with it, you know, which is the root of trust, which is the, as I said, the one-time programmable um, testing. And what what are the, do you have a, you know, right now, for example, in 26262, you need safety manager, right? When safety manager, you really need quality manager and you need security manager. So it's not just in the individual tool, it's also in the focus and also in the, um, uh, in the process itself. And then we enter into the software um, world and in the, um, uh, in the uh, recent Gartner Magic Quadrant in the application security of software segment, we, we are ranking uh, in the top right hand quadrant and actually in the most top and most top right hand side. Uh, has a leader in that area in application security. So, but application security is also looking at all, all the different weaknesses, uh, CWE also looking at all the different uh, static 
code checking and many different things. I can see the relationship between those software issues and the IP issues and the, um, uh, and the uh, tools issue. And then the process issue, right? The ecosystem and how we do the process and how we handle data, et cetera. So that's kind of how I think we are thinking about it and uh, paying a lot of attention to it. Very good. Okay. 